Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back. Another visit with Dr. Liz Lister, Dr. Liz MD. Uh, how are you, uh, Dr. Liz? Doing great. Thank you. How are you? Great. I'm good too. Glad you asked, Art. <laughs> Well, uh, if you don't, speaking. if you don't ask, you know, you have to represent yourself sometimes, John. That's what I was going to ask Dr. Liz, Art. Thanks oh. for, thanks for stealing my thunder. <laughs> um, I, I've noticed as, as I get older that my relationship with my doctor, of course, I've outlived a couple of doctors, so that might have something to do with it. But I, my relationship with all my doctors has changed. Uh, many years ago, I would go in, uh, they would say, okay, next time we're going to do a yearly checkup, I'm going to give you this, this, and this. And I'd say, fine, and I'd go home. Mm. Now, I go in and I'd say, well, when is my yearly checkup? And are you going to give me a treadmill test? And blah, blah, blah. And what does that mean? And why are you doing that? And I want the interpretation. I have a, I am again, it might be the difference in age. I'm older, my doctors are younger, but it seems to me that I have gotten smarter in my relationship with the doctors in going in and I'm taking care of myself. I know under the new system, and it's not just Medicare, but the way the healthcare system has changed over the years, I know that I've got to make those decisions. They're not gonna, I can't trust the doctors to do it. I've also noticed that doctors don't really want to make decisions. I, I, there's something in the last 10 or 15 years, it's the doctors say, well, you know, you could do this, or you could do that, or you could do, wait a minute, why don't you tell me what I can do? You know, I, have to, woe, I have to make woe woe decisions. Is John, John, yeah, you are so, a woeful person. Um, uh, Dr. Liz, can you help shed some light on uh, help me, standing up for Dr. yourself? Liz. Oh, John. Absolutely. You bet. You bet I can. You're making me think of one of my favorite quotes from a doctor who I, I like. And she says, I have the body of knowledge, but you have the knowledge of your body. Oh, that's good. It's a good one, huh? That is good, right. Yeah. yeah. So that's the beginning. That's the first place. So I think it's great that you are knowledgeable. You're going in armed with knowledge, knowledge is power. Doctors have less time nowadays. Everybody knows this. That automatically makes you already doing a good job. When you show up at your own doctor's appointment and you have a list of questions ready to go, that's a good idea. That's just being a smart advocate for yourself. So uh, I, I, have to, I, I have to admit that, um, I, John, I. I I, I uh, appreciate the fact that you do more research than probably I do when I go into a doctor. But I found choosing the right doctor, uh, quite frankly, is uh, as important as advocating for yourself. I have a GP I see twice a year, uh, one one time a year. In fact, I'm going Thursday for the the the, uh, the full uh, annual, uh, and uh, because he, I have medications for a variety of things, and his deal with me. Is he always asked me um, uh, that we can do this way or that way, and um, uh, I recommend this at this time. For instance, uh, in my age range, he said, "You know what? You've had colonoscopies every year forever. Uh, you don't really need them anymore, and they do have some kind of danger." So he was talking about this uh, this test that we see advertised on TV and things like that. But his deal with me. And Dr. Fernandez, I'm going to give him a big shout Ray Fernandez, give him a big shout out. His deal yeah. with me is he says he wants to help me die in my sleep as far away from mm -hmm. this point as possible. Oh, well, that's good. I like so, that too. Uh, he's a terrific uh, doctor. I like that. But I, I, do, I do recognize that, uh, especially when I'm going in, let's say, uh, when we went in uh, uh, with, uh, let's say, uh, uh, an aging uh, um parent or somebody that you'd want to go along and ask the questions. My wife comes along sometimes to ask the right questions yeah. uh, because she's going to be more objective uh, than I will. Uh, for instance, when I had a, a melanoma 
and she came along and she asked all the right questions. So if you don't advocate for yourself, you should at least bring somebody in that for you. Exactly. That's always a good idea. And I think particularly with wives, exactly. as we get wives and husbands, as we get older, uh, we're susceptible to a lot more serious illnesses. And um, our spouses really need to know what's going on, you know, particularly, That's I, true. Think, I think uh, men tend to clam up more than women. Uh, but everybody has a tendency. You go to the doctor. How did it turn out? Oh, well, I'm fine. I got to take some new pills. What? That's not enough information for your spouse. That's right. Your spouse That's exactly really ought right. to know what the underlying yeah. problem is, where it's going, what the what to look for. Yes, uh, absolutely. Yeah. It can be complicated. And, you know, we talk about literacy. Everybody knows what the word literacy means, the ability to read. However, there's also something called health literacy. So you can have very intelligent people who are not that health literate. Okay. It, it, and I always say, when I'm giving a lot of complicated information to patients and I kind of see their eyes glaze over a little bit, I always say that I know that feeling when I go to my accountant. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. It's exactly what you're saying, that yeah. I trust him to look at the information and give me good advice. Right. All right. So I, I try, I strive to do both. You know, I, I want to have my patient advocating for themselves. Usually they have done that by the time they get to me. I think it's great to bring somebody along. I think an extra set of ears is always helpful, right? Because sometimes you're going to be hearing words that are concerning to you and you may or may not remember what was said next. Yeah. Okay. So having a list of questions ahead of time. And I always try to provide my patients with enough written material or links to read to information so that they're not relying just on their memory. And if I'm saying something in a couple of sentences during an hour and a half long appointment, they might not remember that one point that I was making. But if I give them an article to read, either in hand it to them with a piece of paper or a link that I send to them, that's going to increase the chances of the right information getting over to them. Yeah. Good. Good point. Uh, one last question in this area for me is that uh, if you're not fortunate enough to have uh, Dr. Fernandez, uh, as I have, or a Dr. Lister, as your uh, patients have. Um, what are the dangers of people prepping too much by going to Dr. Google? Right. Yes, I have a, a there's a meme that went around and I've used it when I've written a blog about this. And it's a coffee mug and it says on the mug, it says, don't confuse your Google search with my medical degree. <laughs> okay so so that's true there's also something that i this is a quote from me that i say to people which is i've never seen anyone go on the internet and feel better <laughs> and i've been saying this a long time i remember you know i've been a doctor for 30 years and i remember when the internet started being a place where people could get information and I remember how doctors reacted. They were really upset about it at first because they were like their authority was being challenged. But, you know, I've grown up in the digital age and I've in most of the time that I've been a doctor, people have had access to the Internet. So I think it's very important to take it with a grain of salt. Uh, everything, if, you know, if you look up a stubbed toe, it'll tell you that you might have cancer. That's what that's what happens with a Google search. So it has to be taken with a grain of salt. It has to be taken very carefully. I think it's okay. I do not tell people don't go on the internet. However, they have to balance out that information with uh, a trusted advisor that they really feel that they can work with and get real advice and real guidance. Good, good advice. Thank you. Um, Thank you for, for making me feel better about my advocation. Advo advocacy absolutely. for myself. Your self-advocacy. Very Thank good. You. That's, That's I think right. it's awesome. And as, That's what I as, am, yeah. As John is stumbling around the house having stubbed his toe last night, he can rest assured it's probably not cancer. So if we got nothing else out of this conversation, John, you're going to be my partner for a while longer. Uh, okay. <laughs> no flowers, no, no uh, basket of fruit, okay? Just get back to work. Yes, sir. Okay. So, John, you know what? Uh, Dr. Liz and I would like you to have the last word. So, uh, John, it's been nice 
having you ask all these wonderful questions uh, about adv advocacy. What do you think, Dr. Liz? I think it's fantastic. I think everyone needs to advocate for themselves. Be the tail that wags the dog. Uh, couldn't have yeah. said it better. Couldn't have said it better. Thank you, Dr. Liz. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.